digestion of fats the digestion of fats we are discussing about the digestion in small intestine we saw digestion of proteins now when we go to fats now fats that we take the oil ghee butter that which we we all take they are generally they are in the form of large fat globules now these fats they are acted upon by bile salts i told you along with bile salts lecithin is also required so in presence of lecithin and bile salts the fats undergo emulsification so this is called emulsification so what is this process a large fat droplet is converted into small fat droplets and i say emulsified fats they are actually smaller fat droplets so this process is called emulsification emulsification occurs in the presence of bile salts sodium potassium tocolates and glycocolates are called bile salts so along with bile salts and lecithin the fats are then emulsified so at the time of emulsification the high surface tension is reduced and the surface tension is reduced lipases can act on that lipases cannot directly act on the large fat globule the lipases can act on emulsified fats right now lipases lipid digesting enzymes are called lipases the lipases the major lipases includes the pancreatic lipase and intestinal lipase the pancreatic lipase is called steapsin so pancreas from pancreas steapsin or pancreatic lipase is coming and from intestine intestinal lipase are coming the activity of both the lipases is same they acts on emulsified fats the emulsified fats contain triglycerides they contain triglycerides so that means lipase acts on triglycerides when i say triglycerides it includes three fatty acids and one glycerol so when lipase acts on that first one fatty acid is separated three fatty acid plus one glycerol together called as triglyceride now one fatty acid is separated it results in diglycerides diglycerides plus fatty acids lipases again act on diglycerides so one more fatty acid is separated so it will produce monoglyceride plus fatty acid lipases again act on on that monoglyceride separating that fatty acid so you can see it is acting on monoglycerides to separate that into fatty acid plus glycerol so digestion of fats is quite simple the larger fat droplets that we take in along with our diet it is first converted into smaller fat droplets that process is called emulsification emulsification is aided by bile salts and lecithin and this conversion is called emulsification of fats the emulsified fats contain triglycerides 
the triglycerides are acted upon by two lipases the intestinal lipase also called steaxin sorry the pancreatic lipase also called steaxin and the intestinal lipase both of them combined to both of them together act on triglycerides and sequentially it is broken down into diglycerides tri monoglycerides and finally fatty acid and glycerol so at the end of digestion each triglyceride is broken down into three fatty acids and one glycerol remember there is lingual lipase and gastric lipase also inside the salivary glands inside the saliva there is lingual lipase from the gastric juices there is gastric lipase but these lipases we are not generally discussing because the fats generally enter in, into the mouth and stomach as large fat droplets so lipases cannot directly act on the fats they, they can act only on smaller triglycerides as such the functional significance of the gastric lipase and lingual lipase is not discussed here but say for example when you are taking foods directly with triglycerides or simple fat droplets let's say like ice cream so when we are taking directly it, it is containing triglycerides then salivary lipase and gastric lipase are directly producing fatty acids and glycerol so digestion of fats in that cases it starts in mouth and stomach so that's the reason why there is more accumulation of fat there is quick digestion of fats and quick accumulation of fat in that cases digestion of carbohydrates now in small intestine we discussed the digestion of proteins the proteins are already converted into amino acids in small intestine we also discussed the conversion of fats into fatty acid and glycerol it also is completed in small intestine now let us see the digestion of carbohydrates carbohydrate digestion already started inside the mouth itself there is salivary amylase so 30% of starch is converted into maltose inside the mouth itself but the major amylase there is no amylase inside the stomach we have got amylase coming from pancreas so it's called pancreatic amylase pancreatic amylase this is the major amylase in human being but there is difference between the amylase of course the mode of action it acts on starch it converts that into disaccharides disaccharides includes maltose sucrose lactose pancreatic amylase is working in alkaline medium anything above 7 is alkaline medium the salivary amylase has worked in acidic medium it is working at 6.8 but functionally they are both same only 30% of starch is converted inside mouth into maltose but the remaining starch all starch is acted upon by pancreatic amylase to produce disaccharides maltose sucrose and lactose maltose contains two units of glucose maltose contains two units of glucose sucrose contains one unit of glucose and one unit of fructose sucrose contains one unit of glucose and one unit of fructose lactose lactose contains one unit of glucose and one unit of galactose so all these are disaccharides now respective disaccharides to acts on these and these substrates these substrates these substances are acted upon by respective disaccharides maltase 
एक्स वन मॉल्टोस आई टोल्ड यू मॉल्टोस कंटेन्स टू यूनिट्स ऑफ ग्लूकोज सो बोथ दैट ग्लूकोज यूनिट्स और सेपरेटेड मॉल्टेस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम इंटरस्टाइनल जूस सो इट एक्स ऑन मॉल्टोस टू प्रोड्यूस टू ग्लूकोज यूनिट्स सुक्रिस एक्स ऑन सुक्रोस यू कैन कॉल सुक्रिस ऑल्सो एज इनवर्टिस बोथ सेम सुक्रोस इज इनवर्टोस सुक्रिस इज इनवर्टिस Now sucrase acts on sucrose to produce glucose plus fructose. Likewise, there is also lactase. Lactase acts on lactose. Lactase acts on lactose to produce glucose plus galactose. All these three enzymes, maltase, sucrase, lactase, is is present in intestinal juice. Pancreatic amylase comes from pancreas. Pancreatic amylase converts starch into disaccharides, maltose, sucrose, lactose. Its respective enzymes, which are present in intestinal juice, acts on those substances. Maltase acts on maltose to produce glucose and galactose. Sucrase acts on sucrose to produce glucose and fructose. Lactase acts on lactose to produce glucose and galactose. So finally, carbohydrate digestion is completed when the compounds, when complex starch is first converted into disaccharides and finally converted into glucose, fructose, galactose. Carbohydrate digestion ends when the carbohydrates are converted into simple sugars like glucose, fructose, and galactose. digestion of nucleic acids when i say nucleic acids i mean dna and rna dna and rna present in the food that we eat so in the food that we are taking see in the food that we are taking there are cells in the cell in the nucleus there is dna or rna so nucleic acids are present we are speaking about that dna or rna present inside the cell huh? from this dna comes rna now that nucleic acids d there is a enzyme called dna which acts on dna DNA is axon DNA. So we are aware that DNA is a double chain of polynucleotides. Now, when DNA is axon DNA, it will results in breakdown. Individual nucleotides are separated. Individual nucleotides are separated. Similarly, RNA is acts on RNA. It acts on RNA and produce nucleotides. So these two enzymes, DNA and RNA, are together called nucleases. You can call them as nucleases. Call them as nucleases. they are called nucleases because they act on nucleic acids dna and rna are nucleic acids right now there is nucleotides there is nucleotides nucleotides acts on nucleotide 
अच्छा व्हाट इज द न्यूक्लियोटाइड इट इज ए डी ऑक्सीबो शुगर फॉस्फेट एंड ए नाइट्रोजन बेस इज अ शुगर वेदर इज री डी ऑक्सी रिबोस और रिबो शुगर वन शुगर इज देयर वन नाइट्रोजन बेस इज देयर वन फॉस्फेट और फॉस्फोरिक एसिड इज देयर इट इज टूगेदर कॉल्ड इज वन न्यूक्लियोटाइड नाउ न्यूक्लियोटाइड इज न्यूक्लियोटाइड इज इज कमिंग फ्रॉम इंटस्टनल जूस सो दिस एक्स ऑन न्यूक्लियोटाइड दिस बॉन्ड इज ब्रोकन सो दैट बॉन्ड इज ब्रोकन सो इट रिजल्ट इन द सेपरेशन ऑफ दिस टू so those two are separated so when that two are separated you can see these two together called as nucleosides plus phosphate so a phosphate is separated now this bond for the breakdown of this bond there is nucleosides nucleosides is coming from intestinal juice only this also is coming from intestinal juice nucleotides nucleosides both come from intestinal juice so this bond is broken it acts on nucleosides so sugars are separated simple sugar is separated plus nitrogen base is separated so digestion of nucleic acid it's quite simple in the food that we take in is the cellular content whether it is a plant food or animal food in the cells there is nuclei the nuclei contain dna and dna we generally produce rna messenger rna see other types of rna so the acting on that dna and rna nucleic acid to act on that nucleic acid to digest that nucleic acid we have enzymes the enzymes the the first enzymes are dnas and rnas they are also together called as nucleases dnas acts on dna to produce nucleotides rnas acts on rna to produce nucleotides both these nucleases dnas and rnas are produced from pancreatic juice so they convert the nucleic acid to nucleotides nucleotides are acted upon by nucleotidases and nucleosidases nucleotidases acts on nucleotides to produce nucleosides plus phosphate nucleosidases acts on nucleosides to separate that sugar whether ribose or deoxyribose sugar from nitrogen base nucleotidases and nucleosidases both of them they come from intestinal juice finally in the digestion of nucleic acids the phosphate sugars and nitrogen bases are separated from the nucleic acids so that marks the end of digestion of nucleic acids